Hey there, welcome to this lesson on transition metals. Today's question of the day is, what do you already know about transition metals? Transition metals can be found in groups three through 12 on the periodic table. And what's special about them is that they have multiple oxidation states, which remember just means charges. Now, what's weird about the transition metals and um, how they act is that they kind of choose how many electrons they are going to give away when they bond. They're metals, so they always give away electrons. Um, and this is because they have the ability to rearrange or reorganize their interior electrons so that they can kind of adjust how many are in the valence. And that is where the D shift comes from in our periodic table. Copper is always a good example of the transition metals rearranging because copper can take on a plus one charge, but it could also take on a plus two charge. So it'll rearrange its electrons so it has just one valence electron or it rearranges so it has just two valence electrons. And this is kind of determined based on circumstance, who copper is able to bond with and what's going on. There are huge differences between copper with a plus one charge and copper with a plus two charge. So you can see uh, on the left side, we have copper with a plus one charge. Both of our ones were crisscrossed because chlorine is always a minus one. And we get copper one chloride. This uh, Roman numeral here indicates the charge on the copper. So this copper one is telling you that copper is... Um, it has one valence electron and it's giving just one valence electron to the chlorine. This is going to be a white solid, so visually it looks different, and this melting point is 426 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, when we have copper with a plus two charge, um, you're going to need two chlorines to satisfy the copper to give away its electrons. So um, the mass is going to be much heavier. It's going to be named co uh, copper two chloride. And again, the two is gonna indicate the charge on the copper. This is a blue solid, so it looks entirely different from copper one chloride. And the melting point is much higher at 498 degrees Celsius. So there's a few ways that we can figure out the specific charge on a transition metal ion. And first up is literally read the charge. It'll say Cu plus one, Cu plus two. It'll indicate telling you, hey, this is the charge of the ion. Secondly, we can look at the full name of the chemical and the Roman numeral is going to indicate the metal's charge. So in this case, we have copper two chloride saying that copper started with a plus two over here and it crisscrossed down to the chlorine. Um, and the chlorine has a minus one, which crisscrosses over here to the copper. And in this case, you would wind up with CuCl2. If you have the full chemical formula like CuCl2, you can uncrisscross to figure out what the uh, charges were. So this two came from up here, Cu plus two, and there is an imaginary one right here that had come from the chlorine. It's important to see if your um, charges may have been reduced when they got turned into quantities. So it's important to cross reference to the periodic table to make sure that your non-metal has the correct charge. It happens a lot with oxygen. Um, you could have copper plus two and oxygen. They would both have twos and would have been reduced, but oxygen won't be a minus one. So definitely make sure to look out for that. Then finally, who cares? What difference does it really make? Well, the charge is kind of a huge deal. Um, the, we've already discussed how the different charges on copper can give copper bonded to chlorine different properties. And here are three examples of chromium. Chromium plus two is a royal blue color. Uh, chromium plus three is a nice bright forest green color. And then chromium plus six is this like mustardy gold color. And each of these has different properties. But alongside that, um, a lot of the time with metals, the property is toxicity. Uh, you may have heard of heavy metals or heavy metal poisoning, and it's important that we take a look at specifically what ions we're working with because our bodies are going to handle them differently. Some metals are way more toxic than others, and sometimes different versions of the same metal can be more toxic than others. For instance, your body needs chromium plus three, but chromium plus six is toxic for your body. So it's important, um, not just in chemistry terms, um, but it's also important to how we live our real lives.
So when it comes to the transition metals, you should be able to figure out what its charge is um, either by reading just like chromium plus six and knowing that that means that it is given away six valence electrons. Um, you can use the name and the Roman numerals. You should know the Roman numerals one through 10, but I don't really think you would need higher than seven, but still it's good to know them up to 10. And then the ability to uncrisscross to decipher what the transition metal's original charge was. Let's figure out what the charge of this iron is. Looking at the um, subscripts, we can uncrisscross them to figure out what the original charges were. So this two had belonged to the oxygen and it originally was a minus two. And I know that this is minus because we always write the thing that's positive first and the minus comes second. Uh, and then this three had to have belonged to the iron at plus three meaning that we were working with iron with a plus three charge. Now let's look at cobalt bonded to sulfur. So there are no subscripts behind the cobalt or the sulfur. I'm going to assume that, and I'm gonna correctly assume that each one of them is a one charge. So cobalt being the first thing is going to be positive one and sulfur being the second thing is going to be negative one. I would love for that to be the answer, but I know that it's not. Um, but you, before you know, you're gonna check the periodic table on all of these things to make sure that the charges you come up with are correct. Sulfur is a member of group 16, and that means it has six valence electrons. Uh, if sulfur had gained just one valence electron, then it would be, uh, it would have seven in total. And that is not gonna satisfy its valence, it has to have eight in total. So uh, sulfur with a minus one charge is not possible. Meaning that uh, if this is not possible, it means that the uh, subscripts had to have been reduced on the crisscross. So I know that sulfur really would like to have a minus two charge. And I know that because it's two jumps from argon on the periodic table, if it gains two electrons, then it would have eight meaning that cobalt in this case would have had to have had plus two um, because the twos, the when they reduce, when they crisscross and reduce, they have to be equally reduced. It's just like math, what you do to one, you have to do to the other. So if going from negative one to negative two is doubling, then going from plus one to plus two, I would also have to be doubling. So in this case, I would be working with cobalt plus two as the charge on my cobalt, and that is the two um, primary examples. It's either one that you have to crisscross, uh, I'm sorry, one that you crisscross and you don't have to reduce, or it's the one that got crisscrossed and reduced and you'd have to unreduce it. I'm sure there's a math term for that. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions on this, please leave them in the comment section below the video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson and I'll see you there. Bye.